I like to say shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, those that are near, those that are far off. Those that are near or those brothers and sisters of Negro descent to come to understand that through slavery that you are indeed Abraham's children, the children of Jacob, also known as the children of Israel. The brothers and sisters who are, are far off or our brothers and sisters that are, are far off in their understanding. Meaning that they still have not come to understand that the Negro does have a name. And it is not African American. Um, we have been doing some posts and trying to bring people up to speed the reason why we've been doing the post is because we know that we're going to be opening up some things we know we're going to be opening up some things that may be hard to accept we'll be opening up some things that have not yet been heard and uh, very challenging there will be some things that's going to be opened up that will to come to literally shatter things that we didn't come to start believing in. And sometimes truth ain't always easy to, to receive, but nevertheless, the Most High, when he get ready to move, we either gonna move with him, or then we just gonna get left standing there and eventually perish and be destroyed for it. Uh, Right here we have some books. As you know, we did a video today on on the letters of Paul. Once again, I hate that we keep ending up here, but we're going to keep ending up there because that is the number one thing. That's the number one source of all the confusion. Uh, we read the video last week where we made people understand there are many books that are spoken in in the Bible by the mouth of the prophets that are not there how is it that we end up with so little that we do have how is it that the bulk of the what is called the New Testament which was the testament the New Testament which would be the new um, witness of the 12 apostles how could it be that the 12 apostles were the ones that the Messiah proclaimed. You shall receive power. You shall receive power and then you shall become witnesses of me. First in Jerusalem, then in Judea, and then into the uttermost parts of the world. How is it that they could be the ones that would be classified to be the witnesses? Yet there is no witness in accounts dealing with the 12. How is it that, that Paul could have so many letters and so many things in the New Testament where he was never picked to be a witness of the work that the Messiah would get done? How is it that so many books can be taken out and then so many other things put in there? These are some of the things that we're going to look at. Even right now, many of our brothers are mad. They're angry because we are robbing their God of its deity. Because we don't, we don't really believe it. And as I was sharing with one of my brothers today, I said, it's subtle. It's subtle things that are contained in the letters that will trip you up. And we stumbled across the one, one of the things where Paul said, I would that all men were like me. But if he can't contain, let him marry. For it is better for him to marry than to burn with lust and passions. 
And I said, people just graze right across that. I said, what they don't understand is that he shot for the juggler vein, for the juggler vein. It was the most high that declared it is not good for a man to be alone and brought a man a woman. Then it was the most high that declared this is the book of generations in the day that God created them, male and female created he them, blessed them and called their name Adam and told them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth with images and likenesses of me. But if all men were like Paul, there would be no reproduction. There would be no reproduction. Because Paul was saying, I wish that all men would be like me and not even have a woman. Oh, really? When you, when you look at Roman Catholicism and the popes and all of those people that have forsaken the use of the woman, look at the condition of them now as they turn to pedophilia and homosexuality and begin to fondle little children and little boys all because they would that they would be like Paul and not want a woman. But nobody sees anything wrong with the things that's contained in the letters because they don't understand that they subtly get you to go against the Father's will and you don't even realize what's happening. Is not that what the LGBT movement is saying right now? I would that all the men were like us. They don't need no women. Let's pass laws and force the men to deal with us. Huh. I would see, see the average person can't see these things because we have put the dreamer on such a pedestal. And just like I told that young brother, I said, it's not that I hate Paul. I said, but I was a young preacher. I was a young preacher. And Paul was what I preached for him. He became as my savior. Everything was all about Paul, the apostle Paul, the apostle Paul, the apostle Paul. And one day the most high said, I will share my glory with no one. Because I had put Paul in the place that has superseded Hamashiach. So the Most High began to transform what I had writ, read or learned previously off of the letters and show me all these different things from different perspectives in the letters to show me wickedness and corruptness within the letters, within the framework of the letters that solidly get you to go against the will of the Father. And you got brothers out here that will stand there and fight you and try to defend a stance on a devil. You see? And you don't hear nothing coming out of their mouth about Hamashiach. Nothing coming out of their mouth about the Christ. Nothing coming out of their mouth. You don't hear them quoting Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Nahum. You don't hear them quoting Zephaniah. You don't hear them quoting. But they'll quote Paul in a minute. Now we going to tell you what thus said the Most High Heavenly Father who rules and reigns. And tell you what thus said the Most High and his son. And you come back telling me what Paul said. We'll tell you where to put your Paul at. He ain't no different than I am. He ain't no more of a deity and no, no more of an authority than I am. You'll take his word. You don't quote Peter. You don't quote James. You don't quote Bartholomew. You don't quote Thomas. You don't quote none of them. You know why? Because you don't have access to the things that they have written because they have taken away the testimony of the 12 apostles, that the true 12 apostles, and they have replaced it with a false apostle, one who was never appointed for anything. Come on, somebody. Where you at, brothers? We did the video earlier. Somebody said, well, maybe they either sleeping or maybe they at work. Well, I know they ain't sleep now because if they were sleeping, they'd arrested all day. And if they was at work, they are off. Where you at now, brothers? Come on with the videos because we got some books that we're going to open up for you. 
We got some books that we're going to open up for you. These books here contain the testimony of the 12 apostles. These are the books that contain the, the work that Messiah put forth, the things that he spoke, his doctrines, his everything. These are the recording, the recorded records of them that walked and recorded the 12 apostles. These are the things that have been taken out of the scripture and been giving you something else to believe in. And we're going to put these writings, we're going to put them letters that you love so dearly up against the testimony of the true 12 apostles and see what you come up with. See what the doctrine of Paul is versus the doctrine of Hamashiach. This book here is called The Nazarene Acts of the Apostles. Those that can afford it, it's not expensive. Those that can get it, get it. The, or it's called the, the Nazarene Acts of the Apostles or the Recognitions of Clement, the Expanded Edition. We're going to open up a new one, another book. This book is called the Clementine Homilies. And one of the books that we're going to be studying from is called the Gospel of of the Holy Twelve. The Gospel of the Holy Twelve is where you get in the King James Version what is called or what is known as your synoptic Gospels. What they call your synoptic Gospels were not synoptic Gospels. They are the Gospel that was written by the Apostle John. It is the account of the Apostle John's writings that they came and broke up into Matthew, Mark, and Luke and call them the synoptic gospels. We're going to look at some of these things. We're going to look at the doctrine of Hamashiach and see if it matches some of these things that we have been learning. Oh, some of these things going to challenge you to the umph degree. I'm waiting on my brother to come on here so he can help me out. My brother King Rashad and if we go couple that up by we have our African, original African Heritage Study Bible. And we have the iPad to which we will be studying also the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. The, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. This is translated from the original Aramaic, which makes it older than the Greek, older than the Latin, older than the English. There is no wiggling out talking about, well, you know, it is that. Uh, no, no, it's older than all of these books. It's older than everything. You're going to take these things to the bank and you're going to see why they don't have them contained within the framework of the 66 books. Because the very thing that Hamashiach came to sacrifice, to, to die for, I'm not going to say to sacrifice, but the very thing he came. The Bible said he shall save his people from their sins. Here's what I want somebody to ask me. What was the sin that he came to save his people from? Come on in here, Rashad, King Rashad. Yeah, that's what we're going to look at. Because when we ask people about the doctrine of, of Christ, we had all types of things that they said. And as I say before, there's never a wrong answer. We appreciate all answers. Let's bring King Rashard in. He's going to help me out. We don't know where we're going to start. Pray and ask that the Spirit will give us guidance as we are. Uh, just try to dialogue, and that's what it's going to be. This is not going to so much be a teaching lesson as much as it's going to be a dialoguing lesson. So if anybody have anything that they want to say or ask any questions or something, this would be a good time. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. How y'all doing? 
We good. You buffering up on. You keep your camera upright. Huh? You got to keep your camera upright. Like this? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to make sure that you're talking loud enough so I can hear you. I'm going to have to go out and come back in, Elder. It's, it's buffering. I can't hear what you're saying. Ah, uh, that's all. You fine on my end. All right, let me go out and come back in. Okay. So, so, what is the sin that in order to understand what the sin was that the Messiah came to save his people from is skipping. Well, maybe something that maybe we got to move around because on my end, everything is still moving. Okay, Andrea A. Israel, idolatry, sacrificing innocent animals, lawlessness. That's a beautiful answer. You see, that's the sin. Because let's go read Matthew. Chapter 27, verse 50. And if somebody will be so kind to put these scriptures up on the screen. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Okay. Okay. Verse 50 reads When he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Now, now, in order to uh, understand the sin that they to save this people from, you hear me? You skipping bad, is. man? Huh? I say you buffering you say bad. On, yeah, but that that's yeah. that's a that's something that's discouraging you because you see it buffering, <laughs> but you still find on my end. Ain't, ain't nothing buffering on my head, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't even look at yourself, you know what I mean? So, you all right? Yeah. yeah it might be skipping good, on your good, head, but you're moving, you moving just fine on my end. Yeah. So, so you skipping, you buffering on my end. <laughs> but but you know what? Your too. words ain't skipping. Your words ain't skipping, and neither is your body. So that's just your phone. What your phone is showing you. Okay. That's not what your phone is showing me. You see, the camera is still working okay. just perfect. So. All right, caught up then. All right, let's go then. Let's get it. Okay. So we're talking about the sin that Hamashiach came to save his people for, from. Okay. It said the veil of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom. The veil of the temple being ripped represents the destruction of the Levitical priesthood as our forefathers knew it, where they laid sacrifices and spilt the blood of innocent creatures and sent up burnt offerings. The Messiah right. said, my people are caught up in a transgression because I do not desire or tell them to be slaughtering the innocent animals because these creatures are part That's of right. the creation and the most high loves his animals. And my people don't understand because they have learned the ways of heathens and now they are slaughtering the creation and think that they can offer it to me as something that I want. So the Messiah said, I must go and abolish this thing 
two things are going to happen. It will bring the animals back into harmony with the natural creation, and it will also remove the transgression of the brothers and the sisters that are partakers of the spilling of the blood. That's right. So when That's we right. came and start asking people, how many people think that the Christ's blood was a sacrifice for our sins? See, I understand because I grew up in the church, and this is what we were taught. There's a level of repentance that have to that have to be dealt with every time the Most High release a new revelation of truth. You find out what I thought I knew didn't buckle to nothing <laughs> compared to what's said before. And there's a level of repentance that right. is required. And as we go forward, see, we never heard the account of the ones that the Messiah declared would become witnesses of him. They took those accounts away from us. Our praises right. to the Most High through the mouth of the prophet Daniel that in the last days, the Most High's knowledge would be increased. He would give us our books back, give us our scrolls back, and everything that was meant to trip us up would now be destroyed because we will see the truth for what it really is. So that's right. where we was at with that. Okay. So uh, for those of y'all that don't know, this is the young king. This is, this is King Rashad. This is Brother Rashad. Uh, and uh, if any of uh, you brothers and sisters want to, want to connect with him, give him a friend request, whatnot, I encourage you to do so. He's uh, one of my young kings. He's my brother. Uh, study okay. partner is the leading post as well. <laughs> and so uh, as we just sit back sometime and just be dialoguing about this particular thing because there is a level of challenging that is, that is even dealing with us. <laughs> <laughs> that you ain't first start abiding in, you have to be the first one right. to get smacked upside the head. You got to be the first one in there on your on your face on the floor repenting. You got to be the first one. So, but he gives us all praise. He right. gives us somebody to walk with. So, King Richard, you know, let's just take off and just open up some things for our brothers and sisters to just, you know. Ask some questions or something or whatever. But what you think about these books since we have uh, been reading and studying these uh, Gospel of the Holy Twelve and the Clementine homilies and, and the Nazarene Acts of the Apostles? Well, I'll give you my honest opinion. I, I feel like I've been punched in the stomach, you know? Yeah. Knowing that it was more out there and I was always looking into the New Testament trying to figure out why is there so many loopholes? But now as I start to dig into these books, it gave me a revelation to know that I wasn't wrong and it was a lot missing and there's a lot that we got to account for and that we need to do our research and dialogue together so that we can grow as a nation instead of being so divided and they're, they're always ready to throw scriptures at each other. You know, we should be able to call each other and have our, stuff, our ducks in a row and then we can dialogue from that if you feel like you disagree with what's being said or anything that's being said instead of being out here just making the damn fool of yourself, man. You know? Right. I want to read something. I want to read what you sent me yesterday. What was that? <laughs> 78. And the homilies. Uh, you said in the it homilies? In the, it was in the homilies. I All think right. it was 70, 70, 78. Let me think. Yeah, it was 78, I do believe. No. Nah, if, you, if you're talking about sacrifice, it's 77. 77? No, nah, you remember that part where it said, uh, where it said that the Messiah, even though he came and fulfilled the law, <laughs> oh, okay. and so he was it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. It's, it's gonna take a second to get out of here, but uh, hey, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Oh, okay, let's see. No, nah, I think it's I think it's uh what is that? He yeah, at seventy seven. I think it's at seventy nine, yeah. 
79, because I know one thing, man. I got to find that again. Yeah, I got to find that again. No. Okay. Yeah, I'll find that more. Uh, okay. I'll find it. Just the give me a second. You can just start talking, and I, I got you. I got you. I got the computer right here. The titles so of the good. books are that's right, one, The Nazarene Acts of the Apostles, uh, two, uh, Clementine Homilies, and then the uh, the uh, the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. But just while while, while King Richard is looking for something, I'm going to read some stuff for you because we about to, what we about to do is start looking at the doctrine of Hamashiach. Now, see when you start talking about the doctrine of Hamashiach, the doctrine of Hamashiach is going to be geared toward the very thing that he came to destroy. So the doctrine of Hamashiach is dealing with everything that's concerning the, uh, the uh, blood sacrifices, the blood sacrifices and the abolishing of blood sacrifices. All of these things are dealing with the doctrine of Hamashiach. But see, we never knew how Hamashiach felt about nothing because the books have been removed. So what we're going to do is we're going to start reading from the Gospel of the Holy Twelve I don't know where I man. I don't see it at. We're gonna I don't even know what keyword to put in. Of the Holy Twelve. This is all. He says, now let's start reading. This is when we say lection, when we use the term lection, lection simply means chapter. As we said, these books are much older than the than the uh, the Greek, the uh, English, and the Latin, and so the language is a little bit different. Okay, now lection thirty one uh, is dealing with the bread of life and the living vine. Uh, Esus rebuke the thoughtless driver. Now, this is what we're gonna read. He says again. Yahshua says, I am the true bread and the living vine. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the food of God which cometh down from heaven, that whosoever eateth it shall not die. I am the living food which came down from heaven. If any eat of this food, they shall live forever. And the bread mm. that I will give is my truth. And the wine which I will give is my life. Now the Jews strove amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us himself for food? Then Yahshua said, Think ye that I speak of eating flesh which you which you do in the temple of God? Verily, my body is the substance of God, and this meat indeed, and my blood is the drink indeed. Not as your ancestors who craved flesh, and God gave them flesh in his wrath, and they ate of corruption till it stank in their nostrils, and their carcass fell by the thousands in the wilderness by reason of the plague. Of such it is written, they shall wander 49 years in the wilderness until they are purified from their lust. Ere they enter into the land of rest. Yeah, seven times seven years shall they wander because they have not known my ways neither obey my laws, but they who eat this flesh and drink this blood dwell in me and I in them. As the father, mother of life had sent me. 
my sweetie's calling. One second. It's Milligan. I'm gonna stop at the store. Don't trip, I'm back. My sweetie called, I gotta answer the phone. Okay, now, so we're talking about as the, fa as, the, as the father mother of life had sent me and by and by whom I live so that so they that eat of me who am the truth of life even shall they live by me this is that living bread which come down from heaven give it life to the world not as your ancestors did eat manna and are dead. They that eat of this bread and this fruit shall live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, this is a hard saying, who can receive it? When Yahshua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, and he said unto them, Do this offend you? What if you shall see? What if you shall see the son and daughter of man ascend to where they were before? Is the spirit that quickened the flesh and blood profited nothing? The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Yahshua knew from the beginning who they were that should believe not and who they were that should betray him. Therefore he said unto them, No man cometh unto me except it were given from above. From that time many of his, prop, his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Yeshua said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? For thou hast words of eternal life, and we believe, and we are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yahshua answered them, Have not I chosen twelve, and one also who is a traitor? He spake of Judas Iscariot, and son of Simon, the Levite, for it was he that should betray him. And Jesus and Yeshua was traveling to Jerusalem, and there came a camel, heavy laden with wood, and the camel could not drag it up the hill, whether he went for the weight thereof. And the driver beat him cruelly, ill treated him, but he could not make him go no farther. And, and the Messiah, seeing this, said unto him, Wherefore thou beatest thou thy brother? And the man answered and said, I would not that he is not my brother. He is a beast. He Is he not a beast of burden and made to serve me? Then Yahshua said, Have not God the same God made, uh, have not the same God made of the same substance the camel and thy children who serve thee? And have, have ye not one breath? of life which ye have both received of God and the man marveled at such things as this and he ceased from beating the camel and took off some of the burden and the camel walked up the hill and as Yahshua went before him and stopped no more until he ended his journey and the camel knew Yahshua having felt the love of God in him and the man inquired further of the doctrine and Jesus taught him gladly and he became his disciple okay so when we start when we start okay less lessons chapter uh, 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 we got lessons chapter sections so you know I just was making sure making known to the people that this was an unfamiliar terminology so it's either dealing with the particular lesson or the particular chapter that we're about to go in. All right, so that's what it means. Uh, thank you, uh, 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 King Amram. Now, when we start dealing with the doctrine of Christ, what happened to King Richard? When we start dealing with the doctrine of Christ, then we have to start dealing. Let me see if I can find King Richard back. You can't deal with the doctrine of Christ without dealing with the doctrine, with creation. 
because it was to these to the extent of these animals that the Messiah came to remove the sin, the transgression of our forefather, which was the killing and the spilling of the blood of the innocent creation that the Most High loved. So let's go to, let's go here right quick. We're going to keep going. So let's keep going. We're going to skip down. We want to give you, where is King Rashard at? So, now, here's one that brothers and sisters won't like because, you know, when we start looking at the letters of Paul, Paul is always talking about the shedding of blood, the shedding of blood, the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The shedding of blood, the shedding of blood. And that's what we was taught. And I'm covered with the blood. And I'm holding up the blood stained banner. As though the blood cleanses me from all of my unrighteousness. The blood don't cleanse me from my unrighteousness. It is me coming to a sound place in my mind as the spirit brings conviction that I am messed up in this area. And I pray for the strength and the power to get better in that area and repent from that thing and then go and sin no more. How many of us have been covered in the blood and still have a sinful nature? And we, he come to abolish the law of sacrifice but when you look at it, if the only reason why our ancestors ate meat is because they had sacrificed and spilled blood to atone from their sin when the veil of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom and the Levitical priests no longer offer sacrifices on our behalf, why are so many people still sitting there eating on a piece of steak eating a piece of chicken, eating a pork chop when ain't nobody offering no sacrifices and spilling no blood the creatures are still dying if everybody stopped eating meat imagine what that would do to the grocery store and, and the things in the grocery store, those people they don't honor the father because the slaughterhouses don't honor the father when you go to see how they treating the chickens, when you go to see how they treating the cows, when you go to see what they're doing to the fish in the ocean. Those people don't honor God. They are destroying the Father's creation and those animals are being sacrificed to idol gods and the gods of this world so that they can make money and they put them in a grocery store and then they feed those animals to the Father's people and the same sin and transgression that the Messiah came to abolish and to remove from his people. We are still transgressing even until this day. So you quote all kind of scripture Quote Isaiah, quote Paul, didn't turn around and eat a pork chop. Quote Matthew, quote James, quote John, and didn't turn around and do the same thing. What'd it do, baby? What'd it do? You know, I'm riled up, baby, but I'm in my zone. I'm in my zone. You see? So, chapter 51. You see, this is what we're talking about. These things are challenging. We never understood. So let me go to read so you can hear straight from the mouth of the Messiah the things that contain in his doctrine, not the doctrine of nobody else, not the doctrine of your forefathers that were in the Torah, because there were many of your forefathers is the ones that was corrupted in the Old Testament while doing these things. Never mind the scripture says, declare to the mouth of the Most High, I have never told your forefathers to go and do these things, but they done these things for other reasons. So, Let's see what verse, uh, what verse, let me see what, and we're going to keep going, we're going to keep going, chapter 51, that, is that all, uh, chapter 51, in what, the gospel of the holy 12, or, uh, you're going to have to come back on, King Bashar. That's all it is to it. Because you find these scriptures and you're going uh, to come back on. You come back on. I'm going to start reading. I'm going to start reading what the Messiah had to say. 
so brothers and sisters can hear it straight from the Messiah's mouth. No, we don't want to hear nothing about what no Apostle Paul, what so-called self-proclaimed Apostle Paul talking about. We want to hear from the 12 hand-picked men that the Messiah declared would be witnesses of him, that would teach him. And so these things, these writings that we are dealing with right now, these Clementine homilies, these gospel of the Holy Twelve, these acts of the Nazarene apostles, these things that were written by the Apostle John and Peter and them, they they knew that they would be corrupted so they hid these things and these things when they found out that these things existed guess what in the 1800s the Vatican snatched them and locked them away in the caves that nobody would never see them because they went against the grain that is why the Messiah got killed because it looked like he was going against the law to declare ain't nobody slaughtering no animal so they got the part contained in this book where Judas, the traitor, went and bought a lamb for Passover. And the Messiah said, get out of here, boy. Ain't nobody killing no lamb. Ain't nobody eating no lamb. I ain't never ate no meat, no nothing. I've been a vegetarian all my life. We ain't eating that mess. And Judas was so enraged with indignation that he went back and told the Pharisees and the scribes how he refused to slaughter a lamb for Passover and he is going against the law. And it was that thing, that act right there, that one act right there that made them determine, oh, he got to die. He got to die. Because if he bring these people to the point to where they feel like they're going to stop giving sacrifices, there well, ain't no need for us. Ain't no need for us. Ain't no need for us. Now, don't take my word for anything. I'm just sharing with y'all some of the things that I learn as I go along. Now, let's go. Let's go to Lections 33. Which is going to say, by the shedding of blood of others is no remission of sin. This don't sound like what we've been learning in the letters of Paul. This don't sound like what we've been learning in church. This don't sound anything like what we've been learning that keeps us in a transgression because it's the same transgression that caused our mother, our mother and father, Adam and Eve, to get through out of the garden. And when I tell y'all, when I tell y'all, when I tell y'all that sometime I learned things from my elders over in Israel and Elder Pat over a year ago that now I'm just now starting to come to understand it was Elder Emmanuel that told me a long time ago you don't need to be eating no meat. You don't eat no flesh. You don't eat no chicken. You don't eat no nothing. You don't eat nothing with blood in it. It was Elder Pat over a year ago, almost two years ago, that challenged me on my first 40 day no meat fast. He said, I'm going to show you something if you ever want to see what free will is like. He said, brothers and sisters don't know nothing about free will. They don't know nothing about free will. They think free will is just making a choice or a decision to go and do something. He said, but you don't know nothing about free will. When you give up your appetite and you sacrifice those things and you get that blood out of your system, he said your senses and your mindset will be so sharp and so keen because now you're operating in obedience. He said then you'll learn about free will. He said because you'll start hearing voices that you never paid attention to. He said you'll start hearing spirits that can talk to you like they standing right next to you trying to get you to go back on what you said you was going to. He said and it is then that you have the right to rebuke that thing. He said, and that's what free will is all about. And so they challenged me to get the blood out of my system. I didn't understand what they was doing back then. The word ain't coming until later to confirm it. But my thing is this. If the only reason our forefathers sacrificed and killed animals was to atone for their sin. When the Levitical priesthood, the sacrificial part of that office was abolished, 
Why is it that the Father's people are still eating meat that is sacrificed to idols in the slaughterhouses all over the world? And the grocery store is the biggest industry in the world. Imagine how that's how the powers that be stay in control. He said, you know what? Because you're a cannibal. Why? He say, I'm a cannibal. Because did not you hear what the Messiah said? He said, what's not you beating your brother for? This camel ain't my brother. Is he not a beast of burden? And the Messiah said, has he not have the same breath as you? Have he not been made of the same substance that you and your children are? The same way he serves you. Your children serve you the same way. Oh, I know. I know, yeah. You see? That's right, I'm, uh, Elder Mariel. You gotta sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice yourself. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You ain't just getting saved. If thou would confess with thy heart, mouth, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved a lot from the pits of hell. If thou will keep the commandment, if thou will do the will of my Father. See, we got some things in here that's going to bring fullness to the scriptures that you already already been reading. What about Leviticus 11, 11? I got you. Got answers for it. Got answers for it. Now, here's an explanation for Leviticus 11.11. 11. This is the type of explanation, okay? Now, when the Pharisees and the scribes came to ask Moses about putting away their wives, Moses said, you know what? In the beginning, it was not so. God made a male and female. The two shall be one flesh. That's God's way. But, because you have hardened your heart against the will of the Most High, I'm going to write and permit that you can divorce. So even though it might be written in the dietary law, which is known as the law of Moses, does not mean that it was the law of the Most High. Something that sometimes the Most High allowed the prophet to change the laws because the people would not be obedient to the ones that the Father had already established. I hope that made sense, but I got a better answer for you. King Rashad. Well, I'm going to wait on the other, the other ones to come. It's more that's going to come on top of that. Now, let's go. It says, Yeshua was teaching his disciples in the outer court of the temple. And one of them said unto him, Master, it is said by the priests, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Can then blood offering of the law take away sin? And Yahshua answered, No blood offering of beast, nor bird, nor man can take away from sin. For how can the conscience be purged from sin by the shedding of innocent blood? No, it will increase the condemnation. The priests indeed receive such offering as reconciliation of the worshipers for the trespasses against the laws of Moses. But for it is it not written in the prophet, it said for the uh, the, the, the worship, they, they receive the, the offering is reconciliation for the worshipers of the trespasses against the law of Moses. But it says, but for sins against the law of God, there can be no remission, save by repentance and admin amendment. So you see, here's the thing. He's saying, now look, the priest said this. He said, yeah, they brought the sacrifice for reconciliation um, um, according and back to the law of Moses. He said, but as far as the law of God, the only way that sin is going anywhere is by the fact of repentance. That means that we overcome it and we do away with it. So let me read it again. The priests indeed receive such offerings as reconciliation of the worshipers for the trespasses against the law of Moses. But 
for the sins against the law of God, there can be no remission saved by repentance. So you see, there was a level of corruption even in the Torah where our, where our, where our, our ancestors was concerned. You had the laws that men put in place as they rolled on the back of the laws of the Most High. And the Most High said, well, you might have killed the animal to be reconciled and give yourself something to feel good about back to the law of Moses. But as for my law that declared, I have never told you to go and slaughter anything or spill his blood. He said, you got problems. Ain't but one thing that's going to please me, and that's when you quit doing it. He says, put your blood sacrifices to your burnt offerings up. Oh, and, and away with them and cease ye from eating of flesh for I spake not to your fathers I commanded them not when I brought them out of Egypt concerning this thing but this thing but this thing I'm commanding saying obey my voice walk in my ways that I have commanded you and you shall be my people and you shall do well. But they that hear cannot, nor incline their ear. And what doth the eternal command you to do, but to do justice, mercy, and walk humbly with your God? Is it not written that in the beginning God ordained the fruits of the trees and the seeds and the herbs to be food for all flesh? But they have made the house of prayer a den of thieves, and for pure oblation with incense they have polluted my altars with blood and have eaten of the flesh of the slain. But I say unto you, shed no more the blood, nor eat the flesh. Walk uprightly, love mercy, do justly, and your days shall be long. Then the corn that groweth from the earth with the other grain, is, is it not transmuted by the Spirit into my flesh? The grapes and of the vineyard with the other fruits are they not transmuted by the spirit into my blood let these with your bodies and your souls be the memorial to the eternal in these is the presence of God manifested as the substance and the life of the world of these ye shall eat and drink for the remission of sin and for the eternal life to all who obey my words. You see what are we talking about? He said, here's not this corn that is hammered down and put into the fire and turned into bread. Is not it transmuted into my body? Is not these grapes? Is not these grapes transmuted into my blood, into my spirit, in, in, into my blood? Let these things right here be transmuted in you. He said, let these things right here be for the remission of sin. Not an innocent creature that had been slain. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. The corn that groweth from the earth with other grains. Is it not transmuted by the spirit into my flesh? The grapes of the vineyard with the other fruits, are they not transmuted by the spirit into my blood? Let these, let these, let these, the corn and the grains and the grapes and the fruits, let these with your bodies and your soul be your memorial to the eternal. In these is the presence of God manifest as the substance and, and, and as the light of the world. Of these you shall eat and drink for the remission of sins and for the eternal life and to all who obey my words. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market. That's going to be the story of Bethesda. Now, now, let me show you why. 
This is dealing with the doctrine of the Messiah. We ain't talking about all that other stuff that, that we've been getting bamboozled and taught and, and taught it. Why you think we dying of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, sugar diabetes, all of these different diseases and illnesses or full born illnesses. We are sick because we cannot control our diet and because we cannot control our diet and continue to eat things that have been sacrificed to idols in the slaughterhouses we have become as cannibals because we're going to keep reading and I'm going to show you why everybody that got a piece of steak on their plate is classified as a cannibal and you're going to learn this in a minute and I know some of your brothers out there on the last three days when we're making a post you're running off at the mouth like you know something but I told you he didn't thought he know, didn't know nothing that he should know. And you think that you can quote the Bible and quote the scripture and you're still in the transgression against the most high out of your ignorance. And the truth is coming. The truth is coming and you ain't never been challenged. You thought it was a challenge to quit smoking cigarettes, to get off crack. You thought it was a challenge to quit fornicating, but you ain't seen no challenge until you challenge yourself to be obedient to the will of the most high and go back to eating the grains and the fruits of the earth. If you ain't seen no challenging yet you ain't seen it oh fired up fired up baby I gotta get through this right here let me get through this cause my iPad gonna die it says when Yeshua knew how the Pharisees had murmured and complained because he made and baptized more disciples than John he left Judah and departed into Galilee and certain man, and a certain, he said, and, and Yeshua came to a certain tree, and he abode beneath it for many days. There arose, there came Mary Magdalene and other women, and ministered unto him of their substance, and he taught daily all that came to him. And the birds gathered around him, and he welcomed them with their song, and the living creatures came unto his feet. And he fed them, and they ate out of his hand. And, he, and when he departed, he blessed the woman who showed love unto him. And turning to the fig tree, he blessed it also, saying, Thou hast given me shelter and shade from the burning heat. And with thou, thou hast given me food also. Blessed be thou, increase and be fruitful. And let all who come to thee find rest and shade and food. Let the birds of the air rejoice in thy bread branches and behold the fig tree grew and flourished exceedingly and its branches took root downward and sent shoots upward and it spread mightily so that no tree was like it unto it for its size and its beauty and the abundance and its goodness of its fruit and Jesus into a certain enter into a certain village and he saw a young cat which had none to care for her and she was hungry and she cried unto him and he took her up and he he put her inside his garment and she lay in his bosom and when he came into the village he set food and drink before the cat and she did eat and she did drink and he showed thanks unto him and he gave her to one of his disciples who was a widow whose name was Lorenza and she took care of the cat and some of the people said this man cared for all creatures are they his brothers and his sisters that he should love them? And he said unto them, Verily, these are your fellow creatures of the great household of the Most High. Yeah, they are your brothers and your sisters, having the same breath of life in the eternal. And whosoever careth for one of the least of these, and give it, it to eat and drink, and in its need the same doeth it unto me. And whoso willingly suffereth one of these, to be in want and defend it not who, who when when evilly entreated suffered the evil as it was done for me 
For as you done in this life, so shall it be done. So the scripture that's contained in the Bible that we know that says, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me also. What you didn't understand is that that's a verse of scripture that they chopped the tail off of or that they chopped the head off of because when he's talking about when you've done it to the least of these, my brothers, he is talking about the creation and the animals that the Most High have created. Now, now I'm going to read one more scripture, then we're going to shut this down. Because when we start talking about the doctrine of Hamashiach, we got to understand what the sin was that he came to stop us from doing. And our transgression was the sacrificing and the spilling and the devouring of the flesh and of the blood. Now, let's go here. We're going to go to, we're going to go pull this out right quick. And we're going to break this down. You see, when you get the fullness of the report of the 12, in as much as you have done to the least of these, my brother, he was basing that scripture on what the people said. This man carried. For all the creatures, are they his sisters and brothers? And they said it in mockery. And he declared to them, yeah, these are my sisters and my brothers. No, these are your fellow servants. These are your sisters and brothers. They have the same breath as you. They were made of the same substance as you. And the Most High loves them the same way that he loved you. So in as much as you have done it to the least of one of these, the cow that you're going to make a steak out of, the chicken that you're going to put in boiling hot grease, you have done it to me. Also, you didn't see that in the King James Bible. No, you didn't see that. You didn't know that he was talking about a cat when he said that. You thought he was talking about the brother that was on the corner begging for $2. You thought that was the one that you thought that was in the homeless shelter that needed to eat a, eat a piece of chicken. See, we make ourselves feel good when we try to do those things and discern the script. You thought it was talking about the brother that was down and out. You didn't know that it was talking about the cat that you just ran over. You didn't know that it was the dog that he was talking about, the dog that you got chained up in the backyard that you ain't fed in a week or gain no water. You, no, you didn't know that he was talking about the dogs that you're about to go fight until they fight and kill themselves. You didn't know that he was talking about the meat that's going to be on your plate. Now, you didn't know that. You didn't know that. We're talking about the doctrine of Christ. Watch this. King Solomon was way ahead of the game. Let's go see. Proverbs chapter 10. Watch this here. You got plenty of people that want to be righteous. Plenty of people that's talking about they're righteous. Let me see. Let's measure your righteousness. Let's measure your righteousness, preacher. Let's measure your righteous teacher. Let's measure your righteousness. And see, okay, let's go. King James Version. A righteous man careth for the life of the beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. You want to test your righteousness? Your righteousness is directly connected to the creatures, to creation. It was Paul who said, the whole creation moaning and groaning and travailing even until now waiting on the adoption to wit, waiting on the father's people to hear the father's truth and to hear the doctrine of Hamashiach so that they can turn around. All of the animals are moaning and groaning as the raccoons are running up and down the street getting hit by cars because they don't have a place to live. The whole creation is moaning and groaning as you got uh, facilities that got all of these animals caged up. You got 
hunters out there just shooting anything to put it on a wall. Hey, you know what? He said the righteous cares for the father's beast. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. It takes a level of cruelty to be able to go and grab a chicken by the neck and just wound it until his neck pop, pop. It takes a level of cruelty to be able to pluck the feathers out of a bird. Imagine if somebody took one hair at a time and pulled your beard out or pulled your hair out or pulled the hair off your chest or the hair off your own. Imagine that. It takes a level of cruelty to do these things. It takes a level of cruelty to hit a cow in the head with a sludge hammer, then take a knife and rip it from one end to the other and pull all of his guts out until everything. It takes a level of cruelty to be able to do these things. He said, but the righteous man cares for the father's beast. He understood the doctrine of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahshua HaMashiach came to put everything back in balance. And as we move ahead, King Rashad, are you still there? You see, some things just fire me up. Now, you'll know how you know when you have heard the truth. Because see, when you hear a lie, you can go on home and you can lay down and go to sleep. But when you hear the truth, you won't be able to go back to what you went back to. See, some of you got baited in with the post. Because these are the things that are challenging. And if people knew what they was going to hear, they wouldn't even watch this video. So some people got challenged, but you're not going to be able to go. You might not stop eating meat tomorrow, but you won't be able to forget or unlearn these scriptures that's dealing with the gospel of the Holy Twelve, the eyewitnesses that walk with the Messiah. You won't be able to hear the words that's coming directly from the mouth of the Messiah about what was in his heart. These things you ain't heard contained in the letters of Paul. You ain't heard them nowhere in the New Testament because this world system knew that if you ever turn the Most High's people back to the Most High and they understood that their obedience would be greater than their sacrifice. If they could ever pull away from the thing that they were sacrificing and just be obedient to the Most High. The Most High Spirit would rest in them, would make their senses keen, would make their, their, their make them sharp, and it would literally destroy the backs of them who have sacrificed the animals to idolatry and to the God of money so that they can build Walmart grocery stores. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. You see? You see? Watch me quote this scripture. And watch me break this scripture down. Because you ain't got nothing that you can use from the Apostle Paul that's going to override the, 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 the Messiah. Now let me break it down so you can see exactly where you line up. Now the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What was the faith? Faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of God. There was no pistols of Paul when Paul said that. Faith come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of God. You just heard what the word of God said. What the Spirit is speaking that in the last days, many are going to depart from the word of God and then they're going to give key to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that tell you that you can go on and eat the pig. You can go on and eat it if it can be received with thanksgiving. But what you've left out is that the, 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 that the scripture was dealing with them that believe in the most highest word and them that knew the truth of the most highest word. And so when you understand the truth of the most high, what is the most highest truth? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and his law is true. Whatever is contained in the law, that is what is good. In the dietary law, there were things that were permissible to eat. There were things that were prohibited to eat. Them that know the truth knew how to control their appetite. 
them that didn't know the truth would fall victim and become the people that Timothy was talking about in this day. That your conscience would be seared by a hot iron because you would take a man's word over the most highest word. You would take a man's word over what I just wrote, read coming from the mouth of Jesus. That's why we're going so hard because we're sick of these jokers. We tell you what the most high said, what Jesus said, and then you come back trying to tell me what Paul said. Who the hell is Paul? Paul ain't nobody. He ain't no authority. He wasn't chosen by Jesus. He didn't walk with Jesus. He didn't hear Jesus' doctrine. He didn't hear nothing. That's why he can tell you it's all right for you to eat a pig because he want to keep you going oh, disobedient against the Most High. And your conscience is sheer. Now, I'm not saying that to you, brother. I'm just dealing with the scripture before anybody get any crazy ideals to think that you can slide something up in here on this video that's going to go against what the Messiah just said. The devil is a lie. You'll get ran up out of here. Now come on back with some more and watch what happens because everyone that gets out of place going to get rebuked like you wouldn't even believe. You'll be brought to utter shame before your brothers and sisters because we're not tolerating that mess. Ain't nobody standing on the same plateau. It's just sure I'm a Shiite. I don't care who it is. Now, if you're eating that meat, you're accountable. And the only thing left for you to do is just repent. Just repent. Be able to accept the truth. Inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, my brother, you've done it to me too. That's right. He didn't. He didn't, but many people misunderstand what he's saying when he's talking about all creatures were created good and all things can be eaten if they be received with thanksgiving. Many people allow that scripture to twist them up. And, and see, but my thing is this. Don't nobody care nothing about no Paul. When we spitting the words of Jesus, don't you run up here, here on no video quote no Paul. Because the only reason why you would put it on there is because you disagree with something that you just said. You just heard something that pricked you and you think that you can get out of it by posting something Paul said. Paul is no factor here. Paul's no factor here. And when we're talking about, we don't heard enough from Paul. It's time for you to start sitting at the feet of the one that the promise was given to. And if he say the animals is your brothers and your sisters, then you're eating them, you're accountable. The Bible say that the righteous man cares for the father's beast. How you gonna care for something? How you gonna look something in the eye that's looking you in the eye and then hit it in the head with a sludge hammer, then turn around and, and, and cut his leg off and then take a bite out of it? How you gonna care for something? That's not righteous. That's wicked on the highest level. Yeah. So. So yeah. So so you know, like I said, like I said to my brothers and sisters, y'all know sometimes that spirit get to moving. I just get excited. I ain't fussing. I ain't angry, I ain't harping at nobody, you understand what I'm saying? I just be excited about learning, I'm excited about being challenged again, about being challenged again, just moving into something. What harm? Anybody that has anything, did not the Messiah come to abolish the, uh, the law of sacrifice? Is not this what the prophets prophesied in Daniel, in Jeremiah, the new covenant? Not like the one that was written on the tablets of stone that your forefathers break every time they kill the innocent creature. It won't be like that. It will be a new one where you understand my doctrine and that you understand that when the Most High created the animals, they all could talk. That they would walk through the garden and that they would talk to Adam and that they would talk to Eve. But when Adam and Eve transgress, the Bible says, this book says, it says in the Gospel of Holy Twelve that when they left the garden, the Most High closed the mouth of the animals. 
and there was one exception that we have evidence that the creatures were able to speak to. When Eve was deceived, the creature was talking. And three, when Balak and Balaam compiled the scheme to curse Israel and the jackass opened up his mouth, God opened the jackass's mouth back up and he talked to Balaam. You see, the Messiah was able to communicate and talk to the animals and talk to the creation. They were as we were. They were different in fashion, but they were the same kind. They were the same thing. How is it that the human died? He died the same way that the animal dies. You see? So, I hate I lost King Rashard. King Rashard, where you at, man? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. King Rashad gonna be coming to visit. He's camera shy. Yeah, he's camera shy. Yep. And I'm gonna share something with y'all. If I can get King Rashad back, I'm gonna have him to find something. It's gonna be quite interesting. And as I said, there were there were laws like in the book in Exodus that is dealing with sacrifice. Yeah, see, there are laws in Exodus that's dealing with sacrifice where, you know, you bring this bull, you bring this goat, you bring this ram, you bring this, you know what, and it's all about the Lord saying. But see, what we're dealing with every, every beast, thou shalt take to thee, thou seven, and thou female, and you know what? Now ask yourself this question. Do you think Noah and his children was eating the animals that they put on the ark? Yeah, but see, you got to understand this. He wasn't talking about eating no lamb, you see, because from the time of his birth, he had never been a partaker of, of flesh or of blood. He was a Nazarene, They're also known as the Essenes, and they were all vegetarians that had never been partakers of eating of flesh or of blood. You see, and where these things stem from is they first show up in the book of Enoch with the giants and the fallen ones. He said that when they had consumed all the acquisitions of men, that mean when they got through eating up all of the animals and everything that they could devour, he said then they turned on the men themselves and began to devour their flesh and drink their blood. What all thy getting? Get an understanding. What all thy getting? Get an understanding. And he was saying is that when we change our diet, that obedience right there causes us to have long life and helps us with our health. Because now we are eating things that cleanse us do you not understand what the Most High meant when he said your burnt offerings and your sacrifices are a stench in my nostrils? Understand what he's saying. Every time you go and make a sacrifice, every time you go and eat that thing that's on the grocery store shelf that been sacrificed to idols, Every time you go and eat that thing and it gets down in your system, when you go to get it out of you, it creates a stench and a stink. He said, that sacrifice is a stench and a stink in my nostrils. Every time you go to the bathroom, you stink, you smell like a rotten something putrid had crawled up in you and died because you have eaten the flesh. Wow. 
That's how I feel. That's how I feel. But I want to be obedient. I want to be obedient. If the Messiah said it's wrong, we know the evidence that it's wrong because he came to put the sacrifice away. So my thing is this. If the only reason our forefathers ate meat is because of the sacrifices that they made to atone for their sins, now that they don't no longer sacrifice things to atone for their sins, why would they still be eating the meat? Guess what? Somebody is still sacrificing the meat. Somebody is still slaughtering the creature. Somebody is still slaughtering the animal to a to an idol to an idol god. Somebody still slaughtering it to an idol. Because if if somebody was not sacrificing it to an idol god, there would be no meat on grocery store shelves. There would be no meat. And see, this keeps us in the transgression. We have built back up the thing that Hamashiach destroyed. Stand therefore in the liberty that the most where, where Christ had made you free. We are, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage that you was once in. We was in the yoke of bondage through sacrificing and eating of flesh and eating of blood. We were in bondage that could not get us out of our sin, but rather compound it because we were doing things that the Messiah and the Most High did not mean for us to be doing. And we built it back up again. And even though we're not doing the sacrifices, it is even worse because we are partakers of somebody else's sacrifice or somebody else's strangled meat. Now, the word is challenging. I'm up under the same challenge that anybody else is. But you know what they say? In, in the world, they say misery loves company. Well, I ain't going to say that misery loves company because the world don't make me miserable. It makes me feel good. But if misery loves company, how much more should joyfulness love company? I want people to feel what I feel. I'm excited. I'm fired up every time. Every time I can walk past a piece of chicken. Every time I can walk past a double cheeseburger. Every time I can look and see the restaurant for what it really is. A slaughterhouse for the Father's people. Every time I can get over the hump, every time my stomach start growling and I feel like the fruits and the vegetables ain't making me full. Every time the Spirit can come in and say, that's just because you've been pre-programmed to feel a certain way, but ain't nothing wrong with you. Go and eat some more grapes. Go and eat you some rice. Go fix you some corn. Go fix you some good vegetables. Every time I can get past that thing where I don't have to pick it up, I walk away feeling like I done grew some muscle. Yep. So I hope that this is this is part one. We have a lot to digest because we're going to go through these whole books. We're going to go through these whole books. We have a lot to digest, and uh, and we're dealing with the doctrine, the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Yahshua HaMashiach And we're dealing with the testimony Of the 12 apostles That were given the authority To be the Messiah's mouthpiece In the earth That's what we're going to be dealing with I'm giving y'all fair warning now It don't make me no difference who you are When we're dealing with this series We're not dealing with no power We've heard enough of him we ain't dealing with no Apostle Paul. We done heard enough of them. We're going to deal with Peter. We're going to hear from Peter. We're going to hear from James. We're going to hear from John. We're going to hear from Clement. We're going to hear from the 12. We're going to hear from the 12 and those that Peter, those that the 12 appointed to be the mouthpiece as they move into these different places. We done heard enough of Paul. I done heard so much of Paul. I done ripped his letters one way and back another way. I done heard enough of that. But when we dealing with this series, don't you come on here quote no scripture about no apostle Paul I'm telling you now yep yep that's how cancer get in our body it attaches ourselves that's how cancer and those things ain't nothing but demons yep and so for our brothers and sisters uh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. They can be purchased. You just go on Amazon, Amazon, pull them up. They're not that expensive. You can either purchase them, so you can have them in book form, or you can, uh, or you can uh, PDF them. You can PDF them, or you can go on. If you person, if you're type of person like me that I like to go to sleep listening to some words, so my spirit can just eat all night while my body rests. Uh, you know, you can go on YouTube and pull it up. You know what I'm saying? Clementine homilies, the act, Nazarene Acts of the Apostles, the, the Gospel of the Holy Tale. Twelve. You can do all that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And see, in these books, see, in the scripture, in, 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 in the 66 books, it don't tell you, it don't go into detail. But you're absolutely right, sister. That is why he whipped the money changers. He didn't so whip the money changers. He whipped them because of the way that they was treating the animals. And if you notice, the first thing that he did is he started opening up cages and releasing animals. And then he started beating them out of the temple. Yep. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. And, 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 and you know what? You know what? The Most High's word is not grievous unto us. It's not grievous to us. I told my brother, I told my brother, you know what? He said, man, he said, Elder, you know, this is going to be. A, and I said, you know what? When we when we being obedient, we got the promise of the Spirit's empowerment. I said, ever since I read that, ever since I read that, about three weeks ago, when I first read that, at first was shaken by it. You know what? I ate another piece of meat. All praises to the Most High, I don't plan on it. You know, if I get them to fall down, you know, fall weak to something, I'm going to do it. But you know what? I want to feel good. I feel empowerment. And, and it's something that, that even my elder brothers, as I said before, have been getting me ready for. Because they alone not eat meat. Long since has stopped eating meat. And, and when Elder Pat talked to me about understanding the free will he said this is how you're going to understand what free will is he said your brothers and sisters they don't even understand that they have a choice they think that they are exercising free will but they are doing what demons are telling them because their senses are not keen enough he said they don't even understand it but when he, so he challenged me to do a 40 day fast no meat and man, that day before that, I had just flipped me some nice steaks, boy. And I, and I was eating while he was talking. And so I was going to do that 40-day fast. So the next morning, I got up and I ate that last piece of steak. And after that, I went on the 40-day fast. He said, now you might get sick for a couple of days. You might go through some mood swings because your body is is wanting this stuff. And you know, you, you know, he said, uh... He said, but after about two weeks, things going to start happening. He said, you'll start hearing voices that's like they sitting right next to you. He said, it would be so real to you. He said, and when you start hearing those voices trying to entice you to do something, he said, that is where your free will kicks in at. Because now you have a choice to either go this way and fail or go this way and be obedient. And I mean to tell you, man, when I got through about two weeks, man, I'm telling you, I was hearing that thing like it was crystal clear. I was hearing two sets of voices. One set of voices was trying to get me to eat meat when I was falling weak. And another voice, when I see the restaurants all up there in lights, the other, the other voice would be saying, look at the slaughterhouses for the father's people. Look at why the father's people still have a set of curses on. Look at why even though Hamashiach them came and abolished this thing, look at why the father's people are still in the condition that they're in. See, when you go in the wilderness, you say, I destroyed your forefathers in the wilderness because they, they murmured and they complained because they was craving flesh because while they was in Egypt, the Egyptians sacrificed theme to idol gods and, and the children of Israel had gotten accustomed to eating the things that were sacrificed. And it's sacrifice because the Most High told them to. 
and sacrifice just like we do. Because we've been part of the system for so long. We just do it. And if we had to go into the wilderness today or tomorrow, many of us would perish. Because we are not ready to be released or unplugged from this system. Then you can see people like Rabbi Finkelstein, come on, almost 10 years ago when I first heard Rabbi Finkelstein talking about how they kidnap two to 300,000 children from this country every year and then they send the bodies to the slaughterhouses and then they send them to, to, to the restaurants like, like McDonald's and stuff like that. He said that's why we made the sausage popular for breakfast and that's why we made the hamburgers popular for lunch. He said and they come in in the morning and they eating their children and they come in in the evening and they eating the children because the children have been grinded up with the meat and even now you can look at the uh, uh, food of uh, the uh the food company and it'll tell you that there's a certain level of human DNA and a certain level of rat DNA that can go in the in the ground beef. You don't know what you eating. You're accountable. cannibal. You're eating your own brothers and your sisters and don't even realize it because you can't control your appetite. And the first time I heard that, I ain't never ate from McDonald's, never ate another Big Mac from that day. I thank the most high for that. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is that we're going to continue this series of videos dealing with the doctrine of Hamashiach. And the doctrine of Hamashiach is dealing with the eating of flesh and the drinking of blood. That's what the doctrine of Hamashiach was. You see, the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the scribes that was over the sacrificial part of Israel and that thing right there, they were the equivalent to them that owned the grocery stores. If you think the grocery stores are suffering now because a vast majority of the black people, the Israelites, have stopped eating pork, so now beef is skyrocketing. Six and seven dollars for a pack of hot dogs when pork hot dogs is 99 cents. If you think that that have affected the grocery stores all over the world, imagine when the Israelites stop eating meat, period, and go back to eating fruits and vegetables and grains and things of that nature. Then our senses come back to us because we have sacrificed the very thing that Adam and Eve could sacrifice. It was the same struggle. We have sacrificed our appetite. We have given our appetite up. And since obedience is greater, you see, us being obedient is our sacrifice. We sacrifice ourselves. So when I told the brothers that some of the things could turn in the letters of Paul are good things as long as Paul is kept in his proper place. Present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Most High, which is your reasonable service. How do you present yourself as a living sacrifice? Because if you're going to be a living sacrifice, it's acceptable to the Most High because ain't nobody spilling nobody's blood and ain't nobody dying for nobody. But we are living and we are sacrificing ourselves to be obedient to the will of the Most High. That is the doctrine of Yahshua Hamashiach. All praises to the Most High, His glorious Son, and thanks for the Ruach Hakadesh that guides us into ways of truth and exposes lies that have been tucked away for our uh, demise. All praises to the Most High, Heavenly Father, for everybody that is viewing the video. All praises to the Most High for all the ears that are hearing, the hearts that are receiving. All praise to the Most High for those that now was once blind but now can see. All praises to the Most High that have been refreshed, renewed, regenerated, and got a greater zeal to run on for the Most High. All praises to all of those that are trying to serve and honor the Most High. All praises. Hallelujah.